Sami. Good evening, brothers and sisters, and uh, I apologize for that uh, small uh, time of internet uh, interruption. Otherwise, I really thank the Lord for giving us an opportunity again to be able to share in his word. And uh, I was saying that uh, the enemy of souls have uh, been busy and active, but uh, the angels of the Lord have been active too. And so I really appreciate the Lord. Uh, I know time is look uh, into this theme of uh, prayer and uh, praise. Something that uh, is so essential to us who are living in such a time as this. So, if you will, you can really bow down your head with me and uh, we thank the Lord for his blessings upon us. Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for your love. Thank you for you for bear with uh, these frail, fickle beings. But we know that uh, from this mighty clay, you will find pure gold to be used for thy service. And so I do pray that uh, we may be enlightened with what we are going to learn as we look at a few important things. You may hold us up and your word may become our strength every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, one of the most essential uh, things uh, that uh, The church and uh, the people should be cultivating is uh, an attitude of prayer to seek the Lord always and uh, at every time to be at watch because Christ, when he is departing on this earth, he tells the disciples that uh, what I tell others, I tell you also, watch, watch unto prayer because he knows that we are weak and only in prayer shall we be uh, strengthen. Only in prayer shall we be strengthened. Uh, we are told that those who exercise but little faith now uh, the, the conscience. And even if they endure the test, they will be plunged in deeper distress and anguish in the time of trouble because they have never made it a habit of trust in God. The lessons of faith which they have neglected, they will be forced to learn under faith. Why do we have to exercise a faith that we have never been with? that will not faint those severely tried. The period of probation is granted to all to prepare for the time, for that time. Jacob prevailed because he was persevering and determined. His victory is an evidence of the power of importunate prayer. All will succeed as he succeeded. So it was only through prayer that uh, these warriors succeeded in their life. And honestly, for his blessing, we will not obtain it. Wrestling with God, how few know what it is. It's on the stretch. When waves of despair which no language can express 
can express sweep over the supply and how few cling with an yielding faith to the promises of God. And so a time is not far distant where actually we shall be brought into great straits and uh, we need to be able to reconcile ourselves, to reconcile with our hearts that we can pray, we can persevere, and we can take God for who he really is. And that is why I'm looking at this thing of uh, prayer and uh, praise. And before I enter into it deeply, I'd just like to also show you something that uh, will really agitate our minds and will really provoke us while we are studying about uh, prayer and uh, praise. It's found in uh, Selected Messages, Book 1, page 118, paragraph 2. We are told, in the work of this time, it is not money or talent or learning or eloquence that is needed, so much as faith graced with humility. No opposition can prevail against truth presented in faith and humility by workers who willingly bear toil and sacrifice and reproach for the master's sake. We must be co-workers with Christ at if we will see our efforts crowned with success. We must weep as he wept for those who will not weep for themselves and plead as he pleaded for those who will not plead for themselves. And so in prayer and praise in supplication to God, we are not just going to be brought to consider only our lives, but those of whom can't even pray for themselves. Peradventure that our prayers will move their hearts, will move their conscience so that uh, they may be able to be given to Christ once again. And so we are going to look at a few things in prayer that uh, really God has put on my heart that we may consider them that are important in this time because we live in a world like that uh, is in a death like slumber. And uh, we live in a world where everything is coming to an end. And if we ever needed to be sure that we are on the side of God, this is the time that we need to be sure. And how will we know if we are united with Jesus Christ in prayer and he reveals his will unto us because surely the Lord will do nothing without revealing his plans to his servants, the prophets. One of the things also to consider is this, we are waiting for what we call the latter rain. We shouldn't be even waiting for it because it is falling on those who are appropriating the deals of the latter rain. And uh, I'd like just to post to you this, same book, 122.1, 1 SM. The old standard bearers knew what it was to wrestle with God in prayer and to enjoy the outpouring of his spirit, but these are passing off from the stage of action and who are coming up to fill their places. How will they fill their places? By enjoying and wrestling with God in prayer and enjoying the outpouring of the spirit. How is it with this rising generation that we are living in? Are they converted to God? Are we awake to the work that is going on in the heavenly sanctuary? Or are we waiting for some compelling power to come upon the church before we shall arouse? Are we hoping to see the whole church revived? The time will never come. Now, this, is a, this writing is uh, in the context of revival in the church and having prayer warriors in the church. So I'll start with the first point. Amongst us, are we having prayer warriors that are really can really approach God and see things happening in the church of God. I'm not just talking about uh, the things that happen in our own lives, but uh, are people who can rise and see what is happening in the church and the whole Christendom. And um, they offer supplications to the Lord and the Lord does something. 
are we having uh, people like uh, Moses who could approach the Lord in prayer and the Lord changes what he will do to the children of Israel? Can we among us have people like Elijah who prayed to the Lord and then the heavens were shut for three and a half years. There was no dew, no rain on the land until at his words again. Because we read some things in the scripture and uh, maybe it passes as a story or maybe we don't give diligence to what the Bible is saying. Like when you, pray, when, when, when you read uh, the book of Revelation chapter 11, it talks about the two witnesses of God. And uh, it talks about those two witnesses having the power to turn the rivers into blood and to call the fire from heaven or to shut the heavens. And this is in application, not only to the New and the Old Testament, but the people who have the spirit of Moses and Elijah, because these are the two people who actually such a things were manifested in their lives. And so when uh, the scripture talks about a people who will be living in the end time, who have these powers, what we have to challenge ourselves, what is my position in this whole scenario? Because in Malachi chapter four, we are told that behold, I'll send you Elijah, the prophet before the dreadful day of the Lord. Remember the law of my servant Moses. And so this brings to us an idea that there's something in connection with Elijah and Moses in the end times. But let us look at the life of these humble two men who did their great works for the Lord. What was their prayer life like? How were they able to do such a mighty things in the eyes of the Lord and in the eyes of the whole world? They have a living connection with God and they could pray and things happen. You remember uh, God's telling Moses that uh, turn the, uh, 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 besides me and let me do away with this nation and from you I'll rise up a generation to serve me. And Moses told the Lord, no, you don't have to do that. If you are going to do away with the nation of Israel, then start with the, my name. Remove it from the, the book that you have written. And God said, uh, 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 God repented of doing such a thing. And then look at the life of Elijah when he was contending with the, the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel. And then he prayed to the Lord. And uh, at a time when people didn't need fire, actually fire came from heaven. And then after that, he prayed and the rain was able to come to the land. That is something symbolical that uh, we have to consider in our lives that uh, the Lord is needing a people who can be able to pray and then something extraordinary will happen. But for us to pray and uh, extraordinary things happen, we have to be extraordinary in our prayers too. Let's much talk about prayer and uh, what is prayer actually. Prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but brings us up to him. And so prayer is something that is like opening the heart, prayer is opening of the heart to God as to a friend. And uh, you understand how you normally speak to your friend and there are people whom we are so close with that uh, we know that when we approach them, that something that we need from them will be able to happen. Do you have such a relationship with God that uh, if you approach him, as he says in Hebrews chapter four, come boldly before the throne of grace in time of need and help, and this shall be provided for you. Do you, are you sure? Am I sure that this is, a friend that I can approach. God is a friend whom I can approach and he'll answer my prayers. Just like I can approach an earthly friend whom we are close with and he answers my prayer. And so one thing we need to know that uh, prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but it brings us up to him. That just like you may need some earthly thing, you don't call a friend to come to you, but you go to a friend and you explain yourself and when you have reached in the presence of your friend, 
you feel that even before you ask for what you are going to ask, the friend will be able to give to you. Do you have this surety when we approach the Lord in prayer? This is Steps to Christ, page 94. It says, Brace the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse. We talk a much deal of righteousness by faith and uh, the just shall live by faith. But uh, what is the key in the hand of faith then? It is the prayer. And uh, prayer is, is not that we make God know what he doesn't know. Prayer just shows that we believe what God has promised in his word shall be done. This is the heart of righteousness by faith. And uh, the key foundation to it is uh, a living connection with God. And how do we have a connection with God? Surely our fellowship is with the Father and the Son through the Spirit. And it, it is through this communication, a two-way communication, which is made possible by prayer, that uh, such an intercourse can happen. And so if we will understand well even the message of righteousness by prayer, we have to, uh, righteousness by faith, we have to be a people who knows what it means to pray. And uh, what are the condition of the prayers then? Hebrews chapter 11, verse six. This is the condition that you are told. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. This is the condition of prayer. When we do not receive the very things we asked for at the time we ask, we are still to believe that the Lord hears and that he will answer our prayers. There is the aspect of giving up when we have prayed that uh, the thing takes so long, but we are told that uh, we have to believe even before the things that we have asked for, that they will be answered. This is the key for faith. What is faith according to Hebrews chapter 11 verse one? It's a substance of the things hoped for. Uh, hope for things not seen substance of the things hoped for when you look at Hebrews chapter 11. And so we have to have this hope of the things not in our hands already that they'll be provided for us. When our prayers seem not to be answered, we are to cling to the promises for the time of answering will surely come and we shall receive the blessings we need most. You know, human beings have uh, a tendency of praying for even what they don't need or they need it, but uh, at the wrong time. And so a merciful God who knows that if he gives you something at the wrong time, then it will not be helpful in your life. He postpones the answering of your prayer so that uh, at the right time you may be given the thing. And so there's nothing like an unanswered prayer. Every prayer has an answer and we have to trust us and it shall be given unto you. Whoever inspired the writing of Matthew 7, 7, uh, we can trust it that ask and it shall be given unto you. And not only, we are told not only does God actually give his children what they need when they pray, but uh, he gives them with the Holy Spirit so that they may understand how to use it better. And so before even we ask for something which is um, material, we have to ask the Lord of the spirit of wisdom to use that which he'll give unto us. He says that I'll give you the spirit of wisdom that the earthly father knows how to give their children bread. They know how to give their children uh, the things that they need, but our heavenly father will do much more. He doesn't just give us the daily bread. He doesn't just give us the clothing we want. He doesn't just give us the necessities, but uh, with it is actually foremost the Holy Spirit so that we may use it wisely what he will give us. And uh, how do we know that God has answered our prayers actually? When you look at uh, Proverbs 10, 22, a familiar verse that uh, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and he adds no sorrows on them. This is how we can understand that God has really answered our prayers. Sometimes we, we pray, but uh, because we pray and miss, the devil answers our prayers. You know, uh, James chapter four talks about answer, uh, praying a miss for selfish gratification. And so when we pray a miss, what happens? The devil answers the prayers. And how do you know that the devil has answered your prayers? Because it will be just opposite from uh, Proverbs uh, 10, 22. For we are told that when God answers prayers, uh, the blessings of the Lord, he maketh make rich and he adds no sorrows on them. This is how to know that the Lord is answering. 
our prayers. These are fundamental things that we should know. Prayer that is answered from God brings the inner peace. According to uh, the book of uh, John chapter 14, verse 27, it brings that peace that surpasses what actually uh, the devil will answer in our lives. Peace I give unto my own peace, Jesus Christ says in John 14, 27. And also when you look at um, Isaiah chapter 26, verses three and verses four, he talks about, um, he will give him perfect peace, he whose heart is stayed on him because he's trusted in the Lord. Trust ye in the Lord Jehovah because he is everlasting strength. So your answered prayer comes with the strength, it comes with peace, but the things that the devil gives unto us, they really don't come with peace. God will never give his children things that brings them troubles in their lives. And so look at education 253. Faith is trusting God, believing that he loves us and knows the best what is for our good. Thus, instead of our own, it leads us to choose his way. In a place of our ignorance, it accepts his wisdom. In place of our weakness, his strength. In place of our sinfulness, his righteousness. So when we are talking about prayer and praise and faith, actually, in this all um, uh, dosage of the prayer or in this element of prayer, the Lord accompanies our prayers with his own strength, with his own righteousness, with his own wisdom. And he replaces our ignorance, our weakness and sinfulness with all these things that are part of his character. And so we may be sure that uh, when the Lord gives us his blessings, he slays the sinfulness in us. Because sometimes we can pray for something and the Lord will answer it. But the reason why the Lord has answered it so that it may not only benefit us, but it may, may, may benefit uh, another person. And so when God answers our prayers, he accompanies the blessings with his own character so that we may know how to use what we have prayed for. If we are willing to do his will and all his strength is ours. In order to strengthen faith, we must often bring it in conduct with the word. And so prayers that are not according to the word of God, that are not geared towards the will of God, are always uh, noise in the eyes of the Lord because we are told that uh, the prayers of the wicked are uh, noise in the, in, the, in the presence of the Lord. And so the pray, prayers of the righteous are actually uh, according to his word, according to his will. We will not go on praying not according to his word. Examples of prayers in the Bible, in of pure in heart, holy in life, holding fast his faith in the triumph of righteousness against a corrupt and scoffing generation. And when this uh, man of God could not endure what was happening on this earth and his soul was vexed, the Lord did for him what was good for him and for his kingdom. He took him away. And so Noah and his household against the men of the time. There is no righteous man on this earth who have ever brought his supplication before the Lord. And the Lord just sat there in a, a deaf, uh, silent attitude, not answering his prayer. The children of Israel at the Red Sea, when they needed the Lord so much, uh, the Lord answered them. And uh, we are told of the Lord's deliverance for his children. And the two prayers that are answered immediately when we need to be delivered from sin and when we need uh, the blessings from him to help others. David, a shepherd lad, having God's promise of the throne, Education 254. These are examples of the holy men who pray, prayed in the Bible and their prayers were answered. But you have to study their lives and see how was their life? How did they live their lives? The promises to claim, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who, which strengthens me. And so if God is the one who is strengthening you, then it means that uh, sin will be put away. Anything that uh, will hinder your prayer has to be put away so that uh, you may have your way with the Lord. And then he says that uh, if we have put away our sins and ask anything in his will, he'll be able to, uh, to answer us. And then 
our enemies will not be able to prevail uh, against us because uh, when you read uh, the book of Zechariah 2, 8, we are told that he that touches uh, the people of God is like a one who touches the apple of uh, God's eye. And so when uh, we have committed our way to the Lord, when we have given ourselves to the Lord, then we may claim the promises that are in his word. Uh, the book of Psalms 37 verses 5 and 6, Psalms, the division itself, 37, and uh, I'm so glad that uh, uh, the Lord has blessed me and my wife that uh, we have started reading the book of uh, Psalms or the compilation of the songs in, in, in Psalms. The, the book is wonderful. We have just reached uh, the second division and it's so wonderful to us. Uh, I was uh, sharing with my wife that uh, the best way to read the book uh, of Psalms is to read it as a messianic prophecy because that is what it is. The Psalms, most of them were written uh, uh, in a messianic way. Their applications primarily are of the life of Jesus Christ, his death and ascension and his ministry in the heavenly sanctuary. You will find the Psalm to be so beautiful when you read it like that. The division of Psalms 37, five and uh, six, I'll be there in a moment. The word of God says, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Verses six, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. And so after we have committed our ways to the Lord, we may, uh, 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 we may pray to the Lord and expect him to answer. But if we don't commit our ways to the Lord, really there's no way we can uh, ask the Lord to manifest his life, uh, his will in our life and he manifest it. The compassion God that, uh, that God who manifest the compassion towards us, he bids us uh, to manifest the same to others. And so if uh, we are a people who are uh, self-sufficient, who are revengeful, who are not meek, who are not lowly in spirit like Jesus Christ, we may pray and we will never get answered. So accompanying prayer and praise and faith are things to do with character development and character formation. Without the right character, uh, uh, our prayers before the Lord will not be something that uh, will uh, ascend to him as a sweet fragrance. You see, David says in, uh, is it Psalms, the division 142? Look at uh, Psalms 42, 142. One forty one or one forty two? One forty one. Is it? Yes. One forty one, verses one and two. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Verses two says, Let my prayers be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Look at uh, those evening sacrifices, what kind of sacrifice were they? They were spotless sacrifices. And the incense that was offered before the Lord was a sweet fragrance. It was made uh, in a way that uh, no other people in Israel were permitted to make them. And so our prayers has to ascend to God as a sweet fragrance, as a sweet incense, as a spotless sacrifice. And that is why prayer and praise is accompanied with character formation. Uh, when uh, you read uh, Romans chapter 12, we are told that uh, I beseech thee, brethren, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. If our bodies are living sacrifices, then what comes out of it will be a sweet uh, oblation to the Lord. And then when we have become complete in him, uh, he will be able to answer our prayers. And so the book of education, page 257, let us look at this quote. We are looking at the theme prayer and praise. It says, prayer and faith 
are closely allied and they need to be studied together. In the prayer of faith, there is a divine science. It is a sign that everyone who will make his life work a success must understand. And so presumptuousness doesn't have to be cultivated when we are uh, approaching God. Let us not be, be presumptuous before God, pretending that we need this when we need that. And uh, the Lord knows our hearts better than anything. We cannot hide him anything in our lives. And so prayer and faith are closely allied. Let us be direct and to the point when we approach the Lord in prayer. So in our prayers, we meet a lot of blessings because of one thing. We are a people who are always like uh, demanding God to do something. And people are always uh, requesting the Lord. But uh, a prayer should be accompanied with praise as much as you ask. If we will but think of God as often as we have of evidence of his care for us, we should keep him ever in our thoughts and should delight to talk of him and to praise him. Some of our prayers have become so general. And uh, this is a, a statement from uh, David Paulson. I gave that book so that everyone should read it. Every medical missionary has to read that book, uh, The Footprint of Faith by Dr. David Paulson. He says that our prayers have become so formal and general in that even if they were answered, we will not know if they have been answered. And if we, they were not answered, also we'll never know if they have not been answered because they are fo so formal. You go down on your knees and tell the Lord, you know the Lord, uh, it is like this and this and uh, you, you wake up on your knees and go your way. And many of us have never known the providence of God because we take things just casual and normal. Like uh, I just believe it's like if I call somebody, something will be done. If I call somebody else, something will be done. And this is presumptuousness, brothers and sisters. We must uh, cultivate a heart of praise to God, not only requesting him, but being in close connection with him so that even when we offer our prayers, we may be able to understand when he has answered them or if he has not answered them. Sometimes we, as I said, we may ask things and the devil uh, uh, answers them. Like uh, when you read that uh, footprint of faith, there was a girl who was praying for uh, an opening in her life and uh, somebody took her from the sanitarium where our brother David Paulson was working with her. And because she wanted uh, 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 an easy way of getting what she wanted, after praying for some few days, uh, another person came and took her and told her, I'll give you everything that you want. And she thought that the prayer had been answered. And she went to Dr. Uh, Paulson and told him that, you know, I have been praying for this thing and uh, I have been just answered this prayer and here it is answered. And Dr. Paulson told him, no, your prayer has not been answered. The devil has answered your prayers. That is how the devil does. He, he makes you go through the easy way. And uh, this lady was did not take it well, but uh, she went with this person who had told her that uh, she will give her everything that she needed. And um, after a few years, the lady was found to be having nothing because she didn't know if God had answered the prayers or Satan had answered prayers. So let us be careful in our lives to know he is answering our prayers. And, uh, uh, most of the time, let us not just approach the Lord because we have had a trouble, but let us have a living connection with him. All that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Sometimes in our request to God, we have to pause a minute. And instead of continuing to request the Lord, just uh, appreciate what we have at that moment. Some people are dissatisfied in life, so very much dissatisfied. And I'm sorry for many people. They, they can't see the good things that they have for such, for such a time as that. But uh, the, the want of the things that they don't have has blinded uh, their lives in that uh, they cannot even appreciate whatever they are having at that moment. You have seen such a people that uh, actually they are so engrossed in the things they don't have and seeking them until the very simple things they have for that time 
can't give them peace, can't give them joy because uh, uh, they are so focused on what they don't have. Sometimes let us post a minute in your request to God. You have been praying for something, but look around you and appreciate what you are having for that moment. It is in that simple praise of the Lord for what you are having that can move the heart of God even to provide for more. Because look here, if uh, we can't appreciate what we have for a moment, what tells us that we will be able to appreciate what will be given that we don't have? And so let us think about such a things. Let us appreciate what we have. And then when other things are added unto us, we'll be able to appreciate them. So prayer has to be accompanied with praise and it's praise of the things we already have. And uh, steps to Christ 102, paragraph two. Steps to Christ. Look at this beautiful quote. Let us not be always thinking of our wants and never of the benefits we receive. We do not pray any too much, but we are too sparing of giving thanks. We are the constant recipients of God's mercies, and yet how little gratitude we express, how little we praise him for what he has done for us. This is what I was saying. Many of us have lost a thankfulness for God for what, already what we have. And there shall, and there you shall eat before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice in all that you put your hand unto, you and your household, where the Lord, where in the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. And so even before we have that, things that we do not have, even for the meal that you are having this day, let us thank God. Lord, I thank you for giving me a meal. I thank you for giving me a family. I thank you for giving me a husband. People have sought husbands, they have not gotten them. I thank you for giving me a wife. I thank you for giving me these children. However stubborn they are, Lord, I thank you for these children. Before you even seek anything in your lives, people are seeking for country homes. People are seeking for what and what. People are seeking to do many things, but they can't even thank God for their children. They can't thank God for their husbands. They can't thank God for their wives. They are always seeking something from God. They have lost a heart of praise before God. Brothers and sisters, if we will talk about prayer, let us talk about prayer praise to him who has enabled us to have these things. We sustain our loss when we neglect the privilege of associating together to strengthen and encourage one another in the service of God. If we do represent Christ, we shall make his service appear attractive as it really is. Christians who gather up gloom and sadness to their souls and murmur and complain are giving to others a false representation of God and the Christian life. They give the impression that God is not pleased to have his children happy and in this, they bear false witness against our heavenly father. You understand that uh, people pursue things until even their service to the Lord is hampered. And when they come to the church of God to fellowship with others, their gloom, their dissatisfaction is embraced to others, is embraced to others until others cannot see the beauty of God. They start doubting the character of God. What kind of God is this that can't answer his children's prayers? But it's not because the Lord has refused to answer our prayers, but it's because we have refused to cultivate a heart of thankfulness for the things that already we have privilege of. Thank God for the bright pictures which he has embraced to us. Don't you have anything in your life that really you can remember God did for you? that can make you thank him? Isn't there a season of gladness and happiness you had in your life that you can think of, that you really gather gloom, you gather sadness in your heart just because the Lord has not answered A, B, C, D that you have requested him, and even you don't know if these things, when you get them, they'll be useful in your life. And so let us stop having this attitude of I want and let us have this triumphant song in the Lord. You remember the people like Hannah, they didn't wait to have children. They praised the Lord for already 
what they had. When they offered supplication before the Lord, before they were answered, they praised the Lord. This is the attitude that we should be having. Thanksgiving and praising should be expressed to God for the comfort that we now experience. If we will get any other better thing in our lives, let us be satisfied with what we have. Prayer and praise, something so important. Let us praise and uh, thank the Lord for the health of our countenance. And uh, the Lord has blessed us with health. There are people who have never known health in their lives, but Lord, the Lord has given us good health. Even though we miss other things that we are still waiting for to be given unto us, at least the Lord has done something in our lives that we have to praise him for. Praise the Lord even when you fall into darkness, when temptation comes our way, let us not be in the habit of blaming God and asking such a, a questions that uh, where was God? You, this is something that has been talked about so long that uh, sometimes we ask things or things befall us and uh, we ask, where was the Lord when I was going through this? No, God was where he is when his son hung on the cross. In that deep darkness, he was there with him. In fact, the darkness that covered his son was a protection from people beholding his naked body and traumatizing him, uh, scorning him and all that. When you are going through darkness, this is a time to know that God is hidden in that darkness to preserve you from the ways of the evil. And how does God preserve you in the darkness that you are in so that... Uh, out of that affliction, you may come forth purified and you may stand still knowing that God is on your side. And so our conversation, uh, when we approach the Lord, it will not be, when we approach the Lord in prayer, it should not be in a manner of mourning and murmuring that, oh God, you see this has happened and that has happened and this has happened. And, we, we, we waste a lot of time in prayer, complaining and murmuring to the Lord. He knows two words with the Lord will be enough to tell the Lord, you know, this is this. And I know out of this, this is your victory. Make it a rule never to utter discouragement in prayer. Sometimes we go in prayer, whether in public, uh, sometimes in public I say, and then we utter words of prayer, words of discouragement in prayer. But uh, when you gather around the people in prayer, let it be a prayer of hope, a prayer that can instill confidence in the people who are listening to your prayer that really you serve a God who is not uh, uh, compelled by your murmuring and discouragement to answer prayers. There are people who have done such a prayers uh, to complain just before the Lord and uh, to put gloom on other people's hearts. And so, who so offereth praise glorifies God. If our prayer will ascend to God as praises, Psalms 50, verse 23, we are told that who so offereth praise glorifies God. And uh, uh, this is uh, the division of Psalms 22. Is it 22 or 23? Let me give you a verse. Uh, we miss a lot when we approach God in prayer. Psalms, I love the psalmist. Look at Psalms uh, 22, verses 3. 22 verses 3 says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabited the praises of Israel. Think about it. If we approach our Lord in praises, in prayer, then we can be assured according to the word of God that the Lord inhabited our praises. Can you imagine that? This is the blessings that we have been missing in prayers. When we go in prayers and we don't have a heart, we have not cultivated a heart of praise, the Lord doesn't inhabit in our, in our prayers. It is the enemy that will inhabit there. But if um, we approach the Lord in praises, we are told that, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabited the praises of Israel, Psalms 22, verse 3. So, brothers and sisters, if uh, we need to change our manner of prayers, we need to have a melody of praise 
an atmosphere of heaven. The angels of heaven echo music as songs uh, and songs as thanksgiving before the Lord. And also, as we are um, aspiring to live with the angels, we should come so closely to how the heavenly intelligence they serve the Lord. So in our prayers, in our communion with God, for because the angels praise God, and we are told that God inhabits in our praises. This is a secret. You know, faith is believing that God will do what he has promised to do in his word. And so if we approach the Lord in praises, imagine he inhabits our praises. He inhabits our prayers. And in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. David says that uh, one thing I have desired of thee, Lord, in Psalms 24, verses 4. One thing have I desired of thee, Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. And you understand that uh, David always had uh, a heart of praising the Lord. That is why we are even reading the book of Psalms, because most of it is composed of songs which are a prayer. We are told that uh, 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 songs are in as much uh, uh, as prayer. The songs that we sing are as much as a prayer. And so David, when he went to inquire of the Lord in his house, he did not just go to uh, request of the Lord this and that, but uh, he went there with praises and with thanksgiving. In fact, if our lives, if our, our prayers will be changed into praising the Lord, we will see uh, 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 things happening in our lives that have never happened before. And so we are told that uh, the prayer that comes from an honest heart when simple wants of the soul are expressed just as we will ask an earthly friend for a favor expecting that it will be granted. This is the prayer of faith. Uh, I'll just share this. Uh, my life today, MLT. Let me share it with us so that uh, we may be blessed together. I think uh, I have just entered into the second segment of uh, this presentation. But uh, prayer of faith, condition of asking. But the prayer that comes from an honest heart, when the simple ones of the soul are expressed, just as we would ask an earthly friend for a favor, expecting that it will be granted, this is the prayer of faith. Which means we shouldn't be doubting when we approach the Lord. And uh, a famous verse, Mark 11, comes to my mind here. Mark 11. Look at Mark the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 11, verses uh, 23 downwards. This is in the story of the, the fig, fruitless fig tree, and uh, I hope uh, many have read this story about the, the fruitless fig tree. Once a time Jesus was passing, and uh, there was a fig tree by the side of the road. And uh, as up, he went to get some fruit on it because he was hungry. And the disciples were hungry also, but he got no fruit, but uh, the leaves had uh, flowered as if uh, the fruit were on it. And so at that very moment, the Lord cast the tree and it never produced uh, any fruit. And the next day, when uh, they were passing that vicinity. Peter recognized the fig tree and uh, him retelling this uh, story, the tree had with them. Uh, in verse 20, he says, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance said unto him, I'm reading from Mark chapter 11 from verse 20 downwards. And Peter calling to remembrance said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cast is withered away. And now look at the reply of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, and Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. You saw this, we were, we were being told that uh, prayer and faith should be intertwined. A uh, faithless prayer shall never be answered. And so Jesus tells him, for verily I say unto you, verse 23, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever 
he said. 24, therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And so a, a prerequisite for prayer being answered also is that we may forgive others who have wronged us. Look at the book of First, uh, uh, is it First Peter? Book of First Peter. We are told about uh, prayers. Look at First Peter chapter. This is chapter three that I'm looking at, verse seven. First Peter chapter three, and this is for the families that are here. I know you are listening to me. Those who are watching online and those who are at the Zoom. Sometimes we ask ourselves, why, why is it that our prayers are not being answered? Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to the knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Some of us are having differences with our spouses, with our children, that when we go down to pray, our prayers will never be answered. If you are having a difference with your husband, if you are having a difference with your child, if you are having a difference with your wife, and you think that you can go down on your knees and then God will answer your prayers, I think the only thing that God will answer you is the prayer, God help me solve the problem with my child and with my spouse. But if you are thinking that you will go down on your knees to pray for things and to be blessed in your life, while you are dishonoring your husband, while you are dishonoring your wife or your children, brothers, according to the word of God, I can assure you that your prayers are not being answered by God. Satan may be answering your prayers. And so family differences must be put away if we will approach the Lord uh, in prayer. And so it is not something lightly to be taken off that I have a difference with my spouse and I go down on my knees to pray. He says that if you have anything ought in your heart, then forgive it or solve it before you approach me in prayers. And then if you do that, your father which is in heaven will also answer your prayers. How do we go down to pray when we are having differences? Even in the ministries, sometimes these things hurt us so much that maybe you differ with a brother and then you are going down to pray. You are telling the Lord, please bless the work that we are doing. Yet you can't solve a problem that you are having with a fellow minister in the ministry. The same thing applies to the family. And so no one should ever think that uh, they can just uh, hold the family in the matters the way they want and then seek the Lord in prayer and then it should be answered. No. Matthew 7, 7, ask and it shall be given you, seek and you shall be fine, knock and it shall be opened unto you. But these things will be only answered if also we have answered uh, uh, what the Lord has told us. For any gift that he has promised, if we ask it, he'll be able to give us. And uh, my wife brought to me yesterday something so interesting, which I don't want to leave uh, this session without uh, sharing we, with us what uh, we were talking about, uh, 5 T, 518.2. Uh, eh? TM, uh, uh, sorry, TM, thank you for being there. TM 518.2. And I posted it in, uh, in our chat group today. In the morning, we, we, we were sharing a devotion evening when she was sharing. And I thought that uh, this was so interesting. This was interesting. And uh, I'd like you to be blessed by this. Talking about prayer and what the Lord is willing to do, brothers and sisters, it is much more than we can uh, uh, imagine ourselves. Look at uh, this, TM 518.2. I'll see if I can share it with you now talking about prayer and what the Lord can do. I rejoice in the bright prospects of the future, and so may you. Be cheerful and praise the Lord for his loving kindness. That which you cannot understand, commit to him. This is prayer. He loves you and pities you every weakness. He pities your every weakness. 
he hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And wash out what is in green. It will not satisfy the heart of the infinite one to give those who love his son a lesser blessing than he gives his son. Think about that for a moment. That uh, it doesn't embrace God to give us something less. It, it wouldn't impress the father in heaven to give his son something less. We are told in John chapter 3 verse 34 that uh, he gave the spirit to the son without measure. And he will want to bestow blessings to us without measure. But how do we approach him in prayer? Are we consecrated as his son was consecrated when he was on earth? And so it is plan, it is part of God's plan to ground us in answer to the prayer of faith that which he will not bestow, did we not thus ask. And he is willing not to give something less than what he will give his son. Let us understand that. And so uh, let us try to run through some few uh, last sentiments with you. Uh, I believe this is not something that can be exhausted in one session. Our asking must be according to God's will, not as I will, but as thou will. Matthew 26, uh, 39. Asking properly, we must ask for the things that he has promised. Don't, don't go before the Lord asking something that he has not promised. For the pardon of sin, for the Holy Spirit, for a Christ-like temper, for wisdom and strength do his work, for any gift he has promised we may ask. There is nothing he has promised in his word that he will not answer. But sometimes we go and ask God for things that he has not said. It is the will of God to cleanse us from sin, to make us as his children, and to enable us to live a holy life. So we may ask for these blessings. Some of us rush into asking for blessings than asking for our lives to be cleansed from every iniquity. We are so prone to temporal prosperity. And that is why actually the devil will sweep 90% of Adventists during the Sunday laws. We are so used to temporal prosperity that when that time comes and these things are not given and faith cannot be exercised for delay, for hunger, for weariness, we will choose the easier way of sustaining our temporal needs rather than going all the way with the Lord and having eternal blessing. And so instead of every day asking God for temporal blessings, please ask God to cleanse you of your sins so that you may be righteous. And if you miss anything on this earth, you must be assured that you will not miss eternal bliss. To every promise of God, there are conditions. If we are willing to do his will, all his strength is ours. Whatever gift he promises is the promise it, it, itself. The seed is the word. As surely as the oak is in the acorn, so surely is the gift of God in his promise. If we receive the promise, we have the gift. How do we receive the promise? Your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. We have the word, and so we don't have to doubt if God will do his will or he will not do it. Imagine if you are parent, and I don't want you to imagine if you are parent because you are parents. Uh, most of us who are uh, here and who are watching, most of them are parents. Uh, I only see brother Brian who is not a parent here, but he is a parent in, in some way. Imagine if you have a child or if you are, if you had a child and the child comes to you, he needs something and he, in the heart of the child, he's doubting if the parent can give. How surely will you give that child the gift that he wants? So this is how we approach God. He has said, like the father knows that he had, the, or the mother has carried the child nine months pregnancy. He, she has delivered the child. The father is there. And then uh, uh, you see, this father and the mother knows that everything the child needs, that they are liable to giving to the child. But the child approaches them in doubt, in, in fear of their own self, if the Lord will give them. I tell you, there's no prayer that will be answered in that way. If we approach our father, which is in heaven, we must believe that he will answer our prayers according to his will. And so every promise of the word of God must be taken by faith. And then as we take it by faith and assimilate it, then the blessing my, will be ours. Everything that we place before the Lord, 
he will be able to answer them. We, we must not approach God as if he doesn't hear us. I said this in the, uh, in the starting. When we have asked his blessings, let us receive it by faith and he will give it unto us. And so let us be thankful for already what the Lord has done in our lives. Let us uh, praise him for the things even we don't have. Uh, it is rare to find a people praising the Lord that he has given them something they don't have. And I mentioned Anna, that uh, he praised God for a child that she didn't have. She praised the Lord for the child that she didn't have. And the Lord was able to even uh, give her more children. And when Hannah was asking for the child, she didn't ask the child to serve herself, but the child, you see the corruption and uh, infidelity and all this licentiousness had been going on in Israel. And then Anna offered a prayer, Lord, if you only give me a child, I'll give you back the child. Eli and his sons were growing old. Eli was growing old and the sons were not walking in the footsteps of the father. And when Hannah saw the state of Israel, you know what? She prayed, Lord, give me a child. And if you give me a child, I'll give you back the child. For what reason? The system is corrupt and I want a child who will serve you in integrity. Please give me a child. And then the Lord was able to give Samuel who served Israel with all his heart. I challenge the people who want children in these end times, praise the Lord. We are living in a time where everyone is violating the law of God. Let us pray for the Lord to give us children that will restore sanity in the church of God. Right now, if we look on the children who are in the church, they cannot praise the Lord. They cannot pray. They cannot do evangelism. For adventure that the Lord may give us some few years and we will have children. Let us pray that the Lord will give us children that we can give back to him, not children to pursue earthly ambitions and earthly pleasures like other children. If our children will be children to pursue normal life as other children, then may the Lord not give people children who don't have children. I, I think that is a bold statement, but it is a statement that should be uttered. And so, uh, I'd like to finish at this point, but before uh, I finish, I'd like us to go through Psalms uh, 121. Psalms 121 as we close. This is uh, our last reading. Uh, I'd like us to open our Bibles. Interact with your Bible, please. Psalms 121 as we close. The division of Psalms 128, prayer and praise. Yes, this is a, a psalm that should be mastered by everyone. A song of degrees. Uh, we read together, I'll lift up mine eyes unto the hills from when cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is the keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forever more. So I thank the Lord that uh, personally I serve a Lord who he has his children and uh, he has answered my prayers. At least he has preserved my life. I can see him working in my life. Not to boast, but uh, I have this confidence that uh, what he has started in my life, he's, uh, he shall accomplish it. And uh, I can recommend to you, my God, he who is coming, he will come, but he will not be satisfied with them who draw back. He will have us serve him in faith without doubt. And so may the Lord bless us as we continue thinking about the things we have learned. Let us uh, approach uh, the Lord uh, 
in prayer as uh, we close this. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much because uh, you are not a God far off, but uh, you are a God near us. Thank you for the blessings that you bestow upon us. Lord, if only you could teach us to approach you in praise because you inhabit in the praises of thy children. And uh, your presence just doesn't come with uh, the temporal blessing, but even eternal blessings. When we are in your presence, Lord, we know that uh, we are in a safe place. And so, Lord, take away silver and gold, but Lord, do not take away your presence from our lives. Thank you for what you are doing in the lives of the children. As we see the signs of the time, may not our hearts tremble for the things that are coming to happen on the earth because the day will not get those who are in light unaware. I praise you because Jesus Christ is coming again. And Lord, I thank you for the blessings that we shall share when the future glory shall be revealed. Help us to be satisfied with what we have, Lord, first before we even ask for anything else. Help us to appreciate what you have already given unto us. Your name be praised forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and uh, God bless you, everyone. And uh, I pray that uh, God may do something new in your lives. Uh, uh, I know that the Lord is wanting to do something special in the lives of every one of us. And so let us be keen to hear when the Lord speaks unto us. Thank you.